Hey guys, last day of the day. I promise, so here it is. Alright, I'm gonna use a nice nude here from Chisel. Um, then I'm gonna do some white gel polish and some sugar glitter effect. I'm using my natural tips again because I just really love the way these natural tips are. Slight curve, that'll give it. It's gonna see the slight curve. It's gonna look really nice. And these can be done for top, this right structure for coffin, but you can also sculpt it out a little bit more or taper, which I did the last set. So go ahead and please hit that share button. And also, as always, follow the Now Dad official Instagram, the new one, backup page actually. <laughs> this is my old one got hacked. And here we go. I'm gonna use my monomer with this. As I said, I always love my monomer. It works with every powder imaginable. Can't go wrong. So my monomer is back in stock. I'm gonna try to get the 32 ounce soon. I know a lot of you guys want bigger sizes. I get it. Just trying to get the, the right packaging and also making sure it actually is able to, um, you know, um, <clears throat> shipping wise, because it's gonna be double the weight. I don't want it to cost too much shipping. This powder is gonna be a very nice nudie, kind of dark nudie pink. And it's gonna bring out my other powder, my, my white really well. It's more like a darker nude. I'm doing two beading. As you can see, it gets the same consistency as my others. So since I'm doing coffin, I'm gonna bring it in more. I'm not gonna sculpt it out. Bring the sides in more so it takes on more of the tip shape. Make sure I don't get any acrylic on the bottom here. Ooh, this new is nice. Almost like a caramel. This is a nice medium dark nude if ever you need a medium dark nude 203 here. Chisel actually has a lot of nice nude colors. Um, they have a whole line. I think they, they have the most nudes I've seen um, from David Huang. The most nudes. Of course, I'm gonna shape my nails. I'm bringing the sides as much as possible because I want to take on the tip, which is more of a coffin. If I were to do a more taper, I would try to sculpt it out and make it more taper, but there you go. I appreciate it. just hit that share button. My internet's back, Wi-Fi's back. Hey, what's up, Faith, Lynn? How are you? Where are you guys watching from? Where is everybody watching from? And I'm using my 14 brush. Very versatile brush this 14. I have to pick up big, small beads. Bring it in. So remember, this is a nice, slightly curved tip. So I'm gonna have myself a nice apex already. As long as I do my application nice and smooth, my apex should be there. I mean, you even have to. Do too much work there. Fluffing this cuticle. Clean out any excess. 
the powder is more dry now so i'm able to use the whole brush to brush everything through i wouldn't do this when it's more wet because i wouldn't want to drag too much powder throughout the nail okay any uneven surface i can definitely go back through and remedy that later i'll push this part up as much as possible up to the cube area i may be needing a little bit more powder but generally my apex should be generally there any excess under here i can be able to clean up later I think I'm, I'm missing a little bit of powder here somewhere. So I'm put a little bit more here just in case. Get in that cuticle area. Seal it in there. There you go. Perfecto. There you go. Wow, that's nice, nude. It's going to really pop out well with my... Uh, yeah, there they go. Just like that. Keep it 10 to marble. A lot of you guys just putting it right on there. Keep it about 30 seconds for the powder to start working. You never know if it's gonna be too dry or, or too wet. Let's see with my monomer medium setting, 100% EMA, I should be able to just place the powder and it won't run. Most powder won't run, okay? It means it won't be runny because it's a medium setting, but it also gives you time to work with it. I think my monomer is the most sought out after monomer and it's priced reasonable. I really don't go, I mean, yes, my number price has gone up. When it does go up, I change the prices based on the market value. But if I don't have to, if I'm getting at a good price, I will give you guys at a good price. It's pretty affordable. I've seen my number almost three times the amount of my number, and I don't, I don't know how people can afford to pay like 30 bucks for eight ounces. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. the second bead. I want to make sure that everything is nice and flush up in the cuticle area. There you go. And this powder would dry a little bit quicker I'm with my monomer than the wave gel powder but it does give you enough time to work with it. So just know that when you're working with chisel, you're gonna have to be working a little bit quicker because chisel has more acrylic into their powder pigment wise. But it's actually really nice because I actually like working faster. I don't like working too slow either, you know? I like just getting it done. And any unevenness, I'll probably just remedy that with um, my um, hand filing later. I'm gonna bring it just like how the tip is because I want it more coffin because it's gonna be a coffin style. Earlier I used these tips and I did taper. You guys see the difference? With the taper, I can just, you know, with the, with the coffin, I'm gonna go take it in just like how I would with the tip. So the tip has a coffin already. You don't have to clip it, it's right there. So I really like these natural tips. I don't think you find any natural tip that has a slight curve like this and be able to give you, you know, a nice coffin shape. Exactly, it goes fast. <laughs> I watched you recently, you taught me endless nail information. Oh, you're welcome. That's what I'm here for. Information. Just information is free for you guys. Just, you know, your support of sharing on your page, sharing to your small groups or something like that. Um, I recommend sharing it onto your, your personal page because then you can save it for later and you'll be able to find it easily on your own page. And a year from now, it'll remind you, hey, remember this video you saved? And you're like, wow, that's where I, that's where I started. And you love it when Facebook reminds you. <laughs> I sometimes like get Facebook reminders when I first started doing lives a few years ago. And I'm like, wow, look how noob I was. Well, not noob as in like, look at like the way I was doing lives, like completely different way, the way I do live now. It's hard to do lives, do nails, and actually talk and all this stuff. A lot of people tell me like they can't do that. 
I'm like, yeah, I guess I have a natural talent for it. So I can't complain. I can't complain. If you got the talent for it, do it for the people. But you said the potter doesn't even run, but if I want to move it, I can move it. That's a difference, guys. You see a lot of people put, you see a lot of videos of people working with acrylic and it's like super runny and they're just like trying really hard to control it. I feel like that's just, that's, you're like, you don't have control over the powder. You're just trying to, you know, the powder has more control over you. This, you have, I, I'm more of, I need to be able to, when I want to move the powder, I'll move the powder. When I, when I want it to stay still, I have it stay still. I really want to be in control of my powder. This is important to me. That nice shape. Ooh! I, I swear, I'm telling you, nothing beats having that fresh shape right away. That nice shape right when you shape it with your acrylic brush. That's the best feeling. It's so nice and crisp, too. I have to work less later when I have to do my cuticle work. I mean, my, my shaping, I just go through and just finesse it, finish it up. And bring it in. That's the coffin. See that? The coffin's already there. See how it marbles? That's three second rule. With my mind right, you give that three second rule, then you know it, you'll know if it's gonna be too runny. If it marbles really fast, you'll know it's gonna be runny. But if it takes about three seconds to marble, you know it's gonna be nice and medium. So when you put it on, you know you gotta work faster with it. Okay? You have to be able to gauge how fast the powder is drying. And I see a lot of my students sometimes they'll sit there and they just go. I'm like, no, you need to work faster. The powder is drying, okay? You don't have that luxury to sit there and just go slow because they're so focused. You know, when you're working with Potter, you know, it, it doesn't, you you have to go by its time. If it's drying at this speed, you got to work at that speed to, to match it, you know? You can't just sit there and take, uh, you know, your sweet time because it just doesn't give you that, <laughs> that option, unfortunately. That's not how it works. In a perfect world, yes, you know. But this is not a perfect world, so. In the perfect world, they're critical wait for until you're ready for it to dry. But unfortunately, no. Wouldn't that be nice if the critic just sit there and be like, okay, you ready to work? I'll, I'll follow your lead. <laughs> It'd make everybody's job a lot easier, wouldn't it? If the critic just follows our lead. No, we have to actually follow their lead, their acrylic's lead. So you can probably get like set like this out in like less than 15 minutes of application, to be honest. If you stay consistent with your application technique. One, two, three, see that? It marbles. It just sits. This is impartial to the powder, but also impartial to the monomer. A lot of people think the powder is what's buttery. No, no, no. The powder has the ability to be buttery. But the monomer is the main culprit. It's the one factor that can change your powder from being buttery, dry, or wet. So it's definitely the monomer. It has the biggest unvariable. Yes, some powder can be, you know, work better, like, you know, be more compatible and be more buttery. That's true. But at the end of the day, your main factor is your, um, your um, monomer. So a lot of people forget that and they just focus on buying the powder. And they don't realize that when they use their monomer, it might not be the, you know, it might not work, or it will, it will change the powder's consistency. A lot of companies will tell you it's the powder, but I'm sorry, I'm a nail tech. I know, I know the difference, guys. You know, you you get a buttery powder from a company that you know is they make buttery, but if you use a monomer that's not compatible or a monomer that's fast drying or slow drying, it's going to either be runny or it's going to be too dry. 
that's, that's just the, the gist of it. Because the monomer is the biggest factor when it comes down to how consistent your powder is gonna be. That's why I focus more on my monomer. Each HEMA free um, is EMA, so I, I would assume so. It's 100% EMA. Um, you guys see me do so calls with this this uh, this um, monomer. It comes off very nice and easy because it's you know it's a 100% EMA. So like when you're in your zone with application, it, everything just clicks and hits. Beautifully. Later on, I'm gonna do a white design with sugaring effect on this nude. It's gonna look so nice. It's gonna pop out and it's gonna say, hey. I like doing that design because it literally matches with anything that the client wants to wear. Powder right up to the cuticle area, flush as possible. I haven't done nails almost like three, four weeks, and I'm, I'm I thought I'd be rusty, but hey, some things you can't lose, guys. Once you have the technique down, it just is. Yes, in the beginning, a little bit rusty, but. Ooh. It's like riding a bike. Just get right back on it. How fast that marbles. Yep, this is chisel 203. You can find chisel pretty much every local nail supply store, to be honest. Um, or on the online websites like, you know, Nail Co or princessnailsupply.com, they have all the colors. And local nail supplies, Cherry Chisel, they're a pretty big nationwide brand. Very big nationwide brand. Smooth this. Ooh. Uh, chisel 203. This is the color. It's also in the caption, guys, if you guys need it. It's in the caption. So if you save the video, you'll be able to see the color. Very nice nude. So I'm bringing in to side the sides because I want more coffin. It's gonna be more coffin. These tips are very universal. I'll be honest, these are probably my favorite tips to use now. I'm like, I used to use those like stiletto tips and then cut it down. I'd rather just use that for stilettos only. These natural tips definitely give me that nice coffin, slightly curve, and just fine. I don't have any issues with it.
So I'm about to finish my application here. I would say probably under, it's probably, I'm probably at four, uh, 18 minute or 15 minute mark. No more than 15 minutes for the application phase here. Since I started the live, so. I'm just been, I've just been so consistent, so I know exactly how much time I took per nail. I usually stay around 15 minutes for my application phase, no matter what length. Well, a shorter length, I'll be faster, but one full tip length, I'll around, be around 15 minutes. I like to stay around that time there. Because that's, that's, my, that's my efficiency time. That's, that's how efficient I am. I know that's like I've done enough where I know that's my, my ideal time. Oop, this one's a little runny. It's okay, I'll hold the bead onto the brush for a little bit longer. Place it down when I need it. Just because the, the, you have a runny bead doesn't mean you have to throw it away, guys. A lot of people just like throw away the bead. I see my students do that. But they, they get a runny bead or something and they'll just throw it away. I'm like, well, you, you can hold it in your brush for a little bit longer and it'll dry up and then you can use it when you need it, right? Like, yes, that makes sense. You know, why waste product? Yeah, these sides here real quick. My monomer was getting a little bit contaminated, but I got all the way to the last thumb before I need to change monomer, which is great. Um, I always recommend you guys don't put too much monomer because remember the monomer, whenever you're using color powder, it gets um, contaminated. So this was chisel solid 203. And monomer gets contaminated and it won't work as well. I said when you first start doing your first bead, it won't work as well. So that's why you have to throw it out because there's no way. If I was halfway done and the monomer started acting like that, where it gets sticky and the, the powder's kind of not working well, I would have to change it. That's why I only pour what I need. See, I'm gonna use the rest of this just to clean it. There's no point in me using this again. Clean my brush. No point. So I'm not gonna reuse this. So if you report this all the way up the top or like one of those juice boxes, I see a lot of people using mon like a juice box monomer. You guess a lot of monomer you're wasting because there's no way you're gonna use that monomer again, guys. So make sure about 15 to 30 milliliters, depending on the length. 30 milliliters, about half of this, a little bit more of this. This is a 30 milliliter. Um, 15, about half. So that if you're doing short nails, you only need half. So you can just throw away any excess stuff. That should be waste. Cause this is the most efficient amount per cost. As in, how much is it costing you to do per set so you can charge price, right? You have to consider that too, that too product. And for this, this coffee, so I'm gonna bring it in a little bit more. Ooh, got a little bit excess right here, that's okay. I'll be able to go under there with a tool later. But I'm bringing in for a coffin. Of course, the tip has already have a coffin look. very lightly, okay? I don't want to go too much. Remember, the more you file, the more you're going to remove the shape. You don't want to go, you don't want to go to an, a, a land where you, no return, okay? And that, my friends, is a nice coffin. See that? It slightly comes in. Not too much. And there's really no trick or tip Key to my shaping. I just shape based on the tip. Whatever the tip gives to me, I'm gonna shape, I'm gonna make it more crisp. I did a lot of my shaping during my application, so I don't really need to do that. Let's see. Work smarter, not harder. And you gotta know when to stop too. If you keep going, you're gonna change the shape, change the angle, change the, uh, the straightness. A lot can happen if you file too much. So try not to file too much. The application will give it a slight thickness. They'll give you just enough to make adjustments to your shape. But does that mean that you can sit there and file 10, 20 strokes on each side? Because you, yeah, you're gonna remove way too much product, okay?
Ooh. A little bit of water stuck in here. I didn't even see. Okay, let me make sure I get that out. So, I'm going to change the angle of my hands, make sure all the nails are the same length. I go cuticle to cuticle. Of course, the pinky's going to be a little bit thinner, because that's how pinkies are. A little bit smaller, but I'm not too much smaller. Is that a nice coffin? The shape's very crisp. I mean, some hand filing. Where can I buy a 12 ounce scissor online? You can buy them anywhere. Any local nail supply store that will have it. Um, you can also, it doesn't have to be local. It could be a nail supply store near you and call them. If you order enough, they might be able to ship it to you. A lot of supply stores during COVID switch over to like shipping and stuff like that. So they have a system set up. They can ship it to you, you'll pay the price. And also you can go to um, princessnailsupply.com or the nailcompany.com, nailco, for that. You just looked on Google. You don't Google it. You have to just go. They don't have 12 ounces. Uh, no, not every color is going to be in 12 ounces. Most companies won't make 12 ounces. Um, the, the packaging, the pouring is, 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 is the, the unit. You have to, most is two ounces. It's more practical. Because um, think about it this way. The reason why they don't do 12 ounces is because not everybody wants 12 ounces of a color. So they're going to put 12 ounces of product into a container that could be sitting on the shelf for a long time. Well, people can be buying two ounces, two ounces, two ounces. So that's a lot of material, raw material. They have, they're, waste, they're not wasting what they're having sitting on the shelf. So majority of the time, unless it's like a clear or something like that, they won't sell it in uh, 12 ounces. And that's very business. Um, it's all business. It's, it make, it's practical. It, make, it makes sense why companies don't do that. Because um, not everybody is going to want 12 ounces of a certain powder. So why put all your raw materials in a container that can sit there and, you know, that's your investment, your money that's not moving. So no, you're not gonna find 12 ounces. When people wanna try powders, they don't wanna try a 12 ounce. They wanna be able to try a two ounce first if they like it. Generally a, a flagship color or a popular color like white, clear, um, milky white, they'll have a bigger amount, but these colors, nah. I've seen a few 12 ounces, but I love the cut. Yep. Some, color, some companies will do 12 ounces if they know that people love it so much that whether it's going to be very high demand. Hell yeah. Give them that 12 ounces, you know? Yeah, this color is pretty nice. 203. Some of my student kits, uh, they get this color too. Lucky them. Chisel sponsors all my classes. So, oh my goodness, guys. Come on. Loving the shape. Let's go, baby. Now, just some quick hand filing before I use my cuticle bit. And this will break down any bulk and 
even on any surfaces. If your application is smooth, it'll be good. One of my favorite nudes, I would say 172, 106, 203, this color. Um, man, Chisel has so many nudes. I mean, like, let's be honest. At the price, you can probably buy all their nudes just to try them. If you're in, like, if you're buying Chisel products and you, it's like 11, 12, 13 bucks for two ounces, just buy all their nudes. And then pick the one you like and the ones that you don't, or the ones that you, ha at least you have a bunch of them. And you never know which one you are. And the ones that are your favorite, and that's the ones you, you buy. I think you should buy all of them and compare them. Um, I mean, my, my preference might be different from yours, so you never know, based on my clientele, you know? So I think get all their nudes, you know? I might even contact David and just tell him to send me all his nudes. <laughs> Oops, sorry. tips are now my favorite tips to use <sighs> these if you guys do shorty nails these tips are actually amazing mm -hmm. this is a hundred hundred grit yeah it's my hundred hundred grit i mean honestly these last forever <laughs> like you can use one filer for like ever you can actually even clean them if you want to, wash them, sanitize them, barbicide. It's tough, you know, everybody wants to throw them away. If you want to throw them away, get the disposable smaller ones. Don't invest in these big ones. Pay, you know, 10 bucks for a pack of 10 and throw them away. I mean, generally they're a dollar each if you break it down to it and it's not that much. And you, you figure that cost into your set, you're only taking a dollar away from it, but Whew, child, look at that. About five, ten minutes per hand there. Let me try to keep around five minutes per hand. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use pigment powder. Yeah. I'm gonna introduce you guys to my, my pigment powder design. I'm using white gel and pigment powder. I haven't even put it on the store yet. I'll probably put it on tonight for guests to purchase. even at my surface area so later on use my drill bit I don't have any hiccups it just gets, it gets done a lot of the work for me um, early early on hand fine is actually a really good technique to actually get yourself speed up 
speed up your process. Some people say, oh, this, I can do it quicker with a drill. You can, but you have to really know how to control your drill. And a lot of beginners, a lot of people still new to using a drill. So you use a drill improperly, yeah, you can really mess it up. Because then you can drill into it too much and then you'll have, you have to have to smooth everything out with this. You, you're not taking out a lot and you're using pretty much the board of the nail here. Okay, now we're going to take out our special lovely bit, my go-to bit is my 501 sharp for my cable area. Mm -hmm. This one we do the cuticle work and we finish everything off. It's very important that you do this part because this is where you seal in the cuticle area, make sure everything is nice and relaxed and sealed so that you don't have any lifts that can cause, you know, greenies. This is the sharp version of this bit. You have a safety version also on my page. I smooth this area out already, so it's a lot easier for me to go through. Underneath. Any excess? I'll go back through with a small bit underneath later. Make sure I smooth this out. This generally takes it's pretty fast because you already did a lot of the work with the hand filer. So the majority of this bit is using around the cuticle area. Make sure you smooth this cuticle area out. This will set you aside from other people. Nice, clean cuticle, manicured cuticle area. Will give your nails a totally different outlook. This is the area where we couldn't go with the hand filer, so we were able to go through and smooth everything out. And since we already smoothed it out with the hand hand filer, it's just a nice smooth surface that we can just run our drill bit through, and it just removes all the screws and marks. We don't want to drill into this because this is very smooth. The worst thing you can do with the drill bit is actually go through and actually counteract what you did with the hand filer, as in you drill too deep and then it's uneven and then what you gotta do is you gotta go back through and smooth everything back out. That's very annoying. That's why we hand file first so we can see. Mm -hmm. I'm not making concerns right here. I'm taking out the bulkness. Do, do, do. 
I haven't had a QA and a in so long. I gotta get myself a nice bottle of wine, do some Q&A tonight, answer some questions for you guys. I love your top coat. It goes on so smooth. Or two more bottles. Oh yeah, nice. I know my top coat is actually the bomb. The money back guaranteed. Never a dissatisfied customer with my top coat. So smooth. Yes. That smoothness is because it's the consistency. A lot of top coat is too runny or too thick. The two, the ones that are too runny, oh, you lose your shape. The ones are too thick, it's too too thick. I mean, I mean, it's too bulky. So yeah, mine's a nice medium, very thin coat, very shiny, stain resistant. For all you smoker comments. As long as you don't do it on top of white, you'll, you'll be fine. My mat is awesome too. I love my mat top coat. Circular motion, smoothing everything out. It's, an, it's a fine bit, so it's not gonna eat into the acrylic as much, so I'm more of a smoothing action. You cannot complain. The drill bit is structurally made to be perfect. Just a bit to beat. Mm -hmm. Any tips on getting close to the cuticle? Um, you just gotta get close. There's really no tip other than the fact that you really gotta just, just like um, muscle memory. You just gotta be comfortable with it. You know, start out with the safety bit first, you know, getting used to the motion of going to the cuticle area. There's really no tip. There's nothing I can tell you that's gonna be, oh, you're gonna be, be able to do it. I can show you all day, you can watch it all day, but at the end of the day, you have to actually do it yourself to get the feeling of going around. And it's also about confidence. Um, people are not confident, so if you're not confident drilling in the cuticle area like this and you're using a sharp bit like I'm using, yeah, you're gonna cut the client. But I'm very confident what I'm doing because I've done it over and over, I do the same thing over and over. So yes, I, you know, I can get right through it you know, with a sharp bit. So if you're not as confident, use a safety bit so you won't cut the client. And then slowly build your confidence and build your technique and your muscle memory and eventually you'll be able to go through the cuticle area like this too. Like I said, you know, it's like working out or running a mile. You run a mile every day, yes, you're gonna get stronger and you're it's gonna be easier and easier to run a mile every every other day, you know, going forward. But uh, if you can't if you are just sitting back and just looking for, you know, a miracle, like uh, some kind of, you know, instant fix. There's no instant fix. Because a lot of our, a lot of our job requires you to have the technique, and technique is basically practice, practice and repetition. That's how you gain technique. So, it's, it's certainly not a math problem. I can't solve it for you. Give you the formula or the answer. I can show you how I do it, and then give you the confidence to be able to, you know, not give up and do it yourself. That's the best I can do for you. Teach you how to fish. Hopefully you'll fish real good. If I can transfer my skills and experience into every one of you, I would. That would make the nail industry so much stronger. Fortunately, I can only guide you, encourage you be better than me actually. I see a lot of nail techs ask me, I wanna be as good as you someday. I'm like, hell no. I'm like, what? I'm like, I want you to be better than me someday. Don't be just as good as me. There's so many techs that are just as good as me. We ain't trying to have the same type of nail techs in this industry over and over. Gotta be more. The ones that are coming up right now, they need to be better actually. They should strive to be better. Always strive to be better. So this nail industry is not the same as it was five years ago. So why would the nail techs be the same? Stay the same. 
I'd, I'd be sad if nail techs don't get, uh, like, you know, grow and take us to the next level. And what I'm able to accomplish in my generation, hopefully you guys can accomplish in yours at a different level. There's a lot of talent out there. Trust me, I've taught over hundreds of students. I've seen them. Oh, thank you, Kim. Yeah, all my other clients are probably wondering how to get a hold of me. Well, if they search up now at studios again, they'll they'll see it, right? No, it doesn't come up. The the official one? Mm-hmm. It doesn't come up? No. So probably go to Facebook. Really? So if they put Nada Studios and the Nada Studios official won't pop up mm -hmm. first? Really? Hard because it's not as popular as my other one. So it doesn't show up first. But that's why I'm rebuilding it, so it'll pop up more. It's a five and one. It's an every all purpose drill. Everything you need in this drill is here. From breaking down acrylic, long nail, short nail. I really love this drill when it comes to um, cuticle work though. It has a smaller head base. It's just amazing work, man. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do pigment in this set because it's too, the nude is too dark. Next time I do a, a lighter nude, I'll do the pigment. I really think the glitter is gonna pop up in this one. Where the ombre set last time? Literally, like a couple days ago. Damn, it's like almost a month. A month? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of my clients wear their nails a month and then they'll just soak it off and get new set. It's <laughs> no point of doing fills. Do I sell that drill bit? Yes, I do. This is my customized drill bit. You can go to that pinned link right there, nail-shop.com. This is a fine, sharp. So you gotta look up fine and sharp, okay? They have a safety version, exactly the same thing, but a safety version, so for those that are still new and practice. A lot of my students will get both, and then they'll practice with the safety, and then once they get used to it, they'll pop one the fine. And safety is all, the safety is not too bad. It just won't give you, it won't, it's not as sharp, it won't be able to get you into the cuticle area like how I'm doing right now. So I, I, I don't need the safety, but I provide it for my, you know, for people that do need it.
You're watching TV. But relax, okay? You don't test your hand when you're watching TV. Sorry. We don't want to show everybody what happens with this bit. It is sharp. I will cut you. Well, quick you, your ass. And last finger. And then we just gotta clean up underneath with a little bit, some tools, and then do the design. We did shiny last time, right? Yeah. Switch up this time. Okay, guys. Now we're gonna go ahead and go underneath and clean up any excess we have. It's just a small, you can find this on Amazon. It's just a small pointed tool. These are right here in this corner here that has the excess. Sorry. Sure, you don't have a sharp one. This one's not that sharp. Let's just clean up any extras underneath. I know I have a lot in this one. It's okay. Get rid of that. There you go. Please do this because I get really irked when I see all this, all this stuff underneath the nails. It's a personal preference of mine, so I'm pretty sure you guys are get annoyed with this too. I see a lefty comment. What's that? Of course, I'm gonna go through with a nice sanding band that I dropped earlier. Hmm. If you're a lefty, you're gonna be running into reverse. If you're a righty, you're gonna run it forward. Uh, every drill will have a reverse and a forward option. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna smooth out this transition here. Because it's a slight curve, it's a slight curve, so I make sure it's smooth. Sometimes when we do, we do curved nails, it's not smooth and it can get caught on stuff. So a, a sanding band, okay? I'm not using a metal bit. The last thing I wanna do is eat into it and cause it, eat into it and cause it to have a, a, a dip or something like that. That's the worst thing you do. A sanding band will give you a bit more control and smooth out, kind of smooth out the surface there. I love using this. This for those that are working with a slightly curved tip. It's actually very, very, very aesthetically pleasing for the client also. So you don't have little jagged stuff on here that can get caught on their clothes, get caught on anything and pull on the nail. It's gonna be nice and smooth and has a nice transition of a slight curve. Cause you know, sometimes when we, we, we shape straight out, we can't get all that because our file is straight, so we have to go back through and do all this minor, minor maintenance touches that separate our nails from other people's nails. They're gonna look at nails and say, wow, look how nice and clean that is, you know? And then, oh my God, this, this nail tech takes this time, takes, takes care.
And there we have it. I'm gonna go through and check out some final, final check, check off some final stuff. Make sure everything's nice and straight. Try and buff. And do the design. Remember, you wanna do this now because you can't do this later once you do the design, okay? Make everything crisp, even, the way you want it first. Then buff, have them wash your hands. You don't want to go back through and bring out a filer again and cause dust, get stuck on the nail. It's not fun. I'm just gonna crisp up these lines real quick. Not, I'm not shaping into it, I'm just lightly crisping up the lines because you know, I had to file, buff, hand file, so. This will give me more crispness, crispness. Final buff, get rid of any sharp edges, uneven edges, but I'm gonna keep the crisp of my shape. I'm not gonna buff the tip, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just buffing, so. Later on, when I do the design, I'll be more focused. Always buff underneath where I was using my drill bit. Oop. Okay, wash your hands. And there we go, guys. That's the set. It should be under an hour, I hope. <laughs> I hope. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a palette. I'm going to get but my I think 180. My buffer is 180. Hey Tandy, how are you? I use about 180 grit. But most buffers are around 180. Um, I don't really like using a really lot of coarse coarse uh, coarse um, bits uh, buffers because I mean, you want to smooth out when you're buffing. If you have it too coarse, it won't actually smooth, but it leaves scratch marks. That's kind of counterproductive what we're trying to do. I'm going to use a white gel a polish. Any with gel polish, uh, something with medium consistency. Anthony Vince has nice ones, and also Wave Gel has nice white gel polish. I might come up with my own white, white gel polish and black gel polish soon, to be honest with you. I, I need to have it with my art kit. Um, this is regular gel polish, not gel art paint, okay? We're gonna use a white glitter, so we don't want it to, uh, how should I say? We want it to be a little bit sticky so it, it can stick. First things first, we are going to matte everything. My matte top coat, money back guaranteed. You'll see. Oh, guys, look how nice, look how nice this looks. Look how clean this looks. Beautiful. This is structure here, guys. Structurally, this is beautiful. I'm gonna put the matte tackle first before we do the design. That's gonna protect everything on the bottom because the design is gonna be coming up from the top. Look at that. 
crisp shape. Come on. That's enough to make a grown man cry. And my top goes, my mat and my, my top, my clear, it's very medium consistency, so it's, it won't lose your shape. You see that? It won't flow to one corner. Look at that. Crispy, you know what's up. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Nothing is better than the feeling of a nice structured nail. You know that's not gonna break, it's gonna last. Nice cuticle work. All the way up to the cuticle, look at that cuticle work. Look at that cuticle, guys. It's all the way up to the cuticle area. Proper thickness throughout. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just wanna see how this mat this mat looks. Show him the mat. Show him the mat. Ooh, look at that mat. Nice and smooth. Look at that. It's not even streaky. It has it doesn't have any spots that are. You see that? That's a mat, guys. There's no light spots, dark spots. There's no. It's evenly distributed. The mat, nice and smooth. That's a mat. I know a lot of times you guys have mats that are like too smooth, too shiny. Da -da -da -da. Okay, I'm gonna get my liner brush out again. Where did I put that bad boy? In the store here. And this is my liner brush. You can get this. And I'm gonna do my design on here. So I'm gonna do some nice. I'm gonna do some French. Get my outline first, and I'm gonna go through with my other brush and clean it up. I haven't done this French in so long. It's actually very popular. This is a 10 millimeter brush. You can get this liner brush, it comes 10 millimeter, which is this, and then double the size on the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna go back through 
I'm going to fill in this spot. They called it the V French back in the day. V French. Very popular. It was like really popular last summer. Like everybody was getting V Frenches. I don't know what happened. Let's bring it back. Usually sometimes when someone does a set and then posts it online and it goes via trending. Usually my sets go trending um, on Facebook and stuff like that. And it gets brought back, you know? And this one I'm actually going to do just a nice outline. I'm not going to fill it in. Just going to give it a nice bold outline. Probably seen this design before. It's very important to get these lines nice and crisp. I'm gonna do two at once and I'm gonna, I should have to do this whole hand. I already committed before I sprinkle that glitter on. It's gonna pop, pop, pop. I think as you see a lot of people do this with just gel polish, but you don't see them do it with the glitter effect. So we're gonna be the first one, you know that? Hope, you yeah. think this is gonna go viral again? Her hand, actually, every every time I do her nails, the, her all her sets always goes viral and trending, like over like ten thousand people on Facebook likes and over like you know five six hundred. This is my liner brush from my nail dash shop, uh, nail dash shop store down there in Pin Link. Um, this is the 10 millimeter. The other side is the um, is a dual brush. This was two brush in one, and it has caps. A lot of you guys are using the brushes from Amazon. I know it's a little bit cheaper, and you get them those packs, but you, there's no caps to them. You can't protect them. Once you use them, you lay them around, and it actually goes bad. Um, this should be investment. You know, they have a cap, and this is actually the same quality. Um, the same company that makes my acrylic brushes, Kalinsky brushes, are the same company that are actually um, making these ones. So this, the, the the ability for the polish to soak in is very nice. Um, you guys see how the polish is soaked into my brush. A lot of um, brushes that you see um, polished are not actually soaked in, as in um, they are, um, they're plastic. So the, the, the polish doesn't soak into the brush, so you can't get that consistency line that you, that you wanna draw. So a plastic one, definitely a little bit less low quality. And you can tell between a, a plastic bristle brush compared to a nice Kalinsky or nice quality brush just by the look of it, the stiffness of it. A plastic brush would be a lot stiffer and a, a nice quality brush would be nice and even, like, you know, bending and, and be able to be slight manipulating like this. Um, not to say that Amazon doesn't sell good quality brushes, it's just that you get what you pay for. Um, if you're into artwork or you need to do line work like this, yes, you know, sometimes the tool or the product actually will help you. It uh, will make a big difference, you know. You can't go cheap if you're trying to do a $50 design or a $40, $30 design and you don't have the right tools and products to do it with. If that makes any sense. You gotta invest in a good brush because a good brush will last you forever. This is my first generation brush. This is the first brush I ever sold right here. What I'm using right now, and I'm still using it, only because the ones that my newer model ones, uh, the ones I made longer, um, they are in my bag. 
because I just got back from San Jose. I haven't unpacked yet. I know that's super lazy of me. It's been almost two weeks. I haven't unpacked yet. But this one is a very, my very first one, guys. I sold this a year ago and I'm still using it. So yes, your products should be able to, you should be able to use your equipment very well. Okay? Take care of that shit. <laughs> you see how it's nicely soaked in? You don't really need a lot of paint. It's able to give me these nice, lines I need. Look at that. I love doing stuff like this because you just, when you look at the, the you take your time, you have the technique, everything just comes through so well, guys. Look at precision, precise in every nail. Mm. And this takes time, you cannot rush this. A great many people I see work, their work, and I, I know when they get to this part, they rush it, because I can tell in the work. This makes a break to be able to polish, to do the design, will make a break your set. Doesn't matter how nice your set is, if you were rushing on this, oof. Why spend an hour on a set and rush this part and make your set not look good? That's why you take your time, have the right tools, have the right products. And do it right. Do it right the first time so you don't have to do it again. So, now is when the magic happens. It looks good already, right? Mm, let's, 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 let's kick it up a notch. Remember, uh, you remember the guy, Emerald Live? Emerald Gassi? Bam! Bam! You know, he always goes, bam! He puts garlic on it. Bam! Bam! It's kind of like that. It's like, bam! Generally, uh, if you would do this, I say one finger at a time, two finger at a time. If you're a little bit slower, don't do it like me, do all five fingers, unless you can. I'm not saying that you can't, but you definitely want to make sure that <laughs> you'll be able to do five fingers at the same time, because if you mess up, there's it's no, it's no curing, and then you cure all the other polish, okay? So take your time. Just sprinkling this white glitter on here. I'm gonna go here. She's gonna go here. So how, okay, now I, know, I really wanna do this. <laughs> oh yeah? Do it. I just showed you how. Do it. Tag me. Now that inspo. I think I'm the first one to do it this style. This design has been done a lot, but I think I'm the first one to do the sugaring effect. I always like to like, you know, do differently. It should be about 30 seconds to cure, really not that much time. You take it out, you dust it off. Finesse, y'all. Finessed. Yeesh. It'd be the one. So I'm gonna do this hand and I'm, I'm gonna finish this other hand off without doing live, but here you guys go. Come on. Y'all can y'all can pick your jaw up from the floor already, okay? Go ahead. Get the, you know, wipe, wipe your mouth, the drool, pick the jaw off the floor, get your gel polish, go get your nail dead, art, do art brush, start bombing out on these sets, okay? Get yourself a nice white glitter on Amazon or whatever. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. I'm gonna finish the other hand off live so you guys can, uh, you know. That's the mat, y'all. I protect it with the mat first and that's it, that's done. How much I charge, I don't really mention prices on my live. 
But as you can see, my price is a little bit different, probably a little more on the premium side, right? So unique, thank you. No top coat needed. This will, uh, the glitter will be right on top. It's a texture effect. Um, that's why it gives that texture. Uh, the, the gel polish will cure, uh, hold it on there. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. And make sure you guys follow Nada Studios official page right there and the pinned link. I really would appreciate it. And turn on your notification to catch all my content. I'm rebuilding my Instagram right now because my last one got hacked. So I really appreciate all your support. If you really enjoy this live and learn anything from it, and the best way to support a content creator like me is to follow, share, and like. Now I like to stop, but now I'm in love. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. Bye.